Catholic Musings. Catholic Musings. Catholic Musings. Catholic Musings. I'm Jude Xavier, and you're listening to Catholic Musings. John the Baptist leapt with joy when he sensed the presence of Christ. It is that event we hear in the Gospel reading for the fourth Sunday of Advent, Year C. In his leaping, we see worship in its most pure sense, the recognition of the nearness of the divine and the human response to it out of sheer joy. It is appropriate that it is John the Baptist who is the first to worship our Saviour in this way. Through our separation from God by virtue of sin, we have a deep need to enter more closely into God's presence. John the Baptist, at the visitation of Mary to Elizabeth, physically leapt for joy. As Mary and Elizabeth came together in their embrace, John likewise attempted to come closer to the Christ as he leapt in the womb. King David responded in a similar fashion as the Ark of the Lord entered the city of David. We hear this account in the second book of Samuel. Now as the Ark of Yahweh entered the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, was watching from the window, and when she saw King David leaping and whirling round before Yahweh, the sight of him filled her with contempt. King David recognized the presence of the Lord and leapt for joy, his body worshipping in tune with his voice, whilst coming closer to the divine. John leapt in his mother's womb. He who one day would preach a message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and baptize those who would come to the River Jordan confessing their sins is the one who was acutely aware of the divide between mankind and God. He was the one who knew that mankind was separated from God and needed to come closer to God through repentance and worship, leaping for joy. He was the one of whom his own father, Zechariah, said, You will go before the Lord to prepare a way for him to give his people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. How do we worship when we gather together? Are we aware of the living but hidden presence of Christ as we enter into the worshipping community? Does that awareness lead us to respond with heart and body in total joy? Like John in the womb, we should work towards having that response when we first sense the presence of the Lord. The challenge for us in our Christian life is how do we continue not only to sense the presence of Christ, but also to respond with that joyful exaltation? Does our worship reflect the presence of holiness in our midst? Is it performed as a community with beauty and care? Or have we become sloppy and ugly in how we celebrate the liturgy? Of course, we are currently in the Advent season before Christmas. Not long and we will be celebrating the Epiphany in the Christmas season. The great events which we recall on and around the Feast of Epiphany are reminders to us of the revelations of holiness to those who witness them. As John the Baptist experienced an epiphany in the womb, the Magi experienced an epiphany as they approached the Christ child with their precious gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, and knelt. In a similar way, the community at Cana experienced that epiphany as Christ performed his first miracle of changing water into wine. Those who were at the banks of the River Jordan experienced their epiphany as Jesus was baptized and the heavens opened whilst the Spirit of God descended like a dove and there was a voice from heaven saying, This is my Son, the Beloved. My favour rests on Him. There is an epiphany hymn which encapsulates this so well, how and why our adoration takes place. It opens with these words. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. 
bow down before him, his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him. The Lord is his name. Our worship happens when we recognize that divine beauty and allow ourselves to worship and adore Jesus simply because he is the Lord, simply because of the divine presence. Thank you for joining me today. If you would like to read a more detailed meditation on this event, you can find one in my book, Begotten Not Made, The Joyful Mysteries of the Rosary. Details on how to purchase this and other books of mine, along with all episodes of Catholic Musings, can be found at our website, catholicmusings.org. You can also find a link there to Patreon, the website which allows you to support the work and ministry of Catholic Musings financially. May God bless you and your worship as we kneel and adore him.